I see we are live. Hey there, Facebook. Good evening. How y'all doing tonight? Today is January 9th. It is Saturday. And um, well, my name is Mick Shriver. I'm an Episcopal priest serving two parishes in a town called Ludington, Michigan. The first is Emmanuel Lutheran. The second is Grace Episcopal. And every night at 9 o'clock, we gather online people from the parishes uh, that I serve, along with just people from across the country. We get together and, well, we check in with each other. See how things are going, how our life is treating us. Uh, we have an adult beverage together most nights. Um, we say a say a devotion together. We say the nightly office from the Episcopal tradition, and um, we say some prayers for people who've asked us to pray for them. We read a little scripture together. We basically just spend some time together, you know, tell a story or two, laugh, cry sometimes about <laughs> what what the events have been over the course of the day and if anything if anything earth shattering has happened in the news today i must apologize now i didn't look at a lick of it okay i watched a little bit of football today uh, i took a day off i really did um some family came over my daughter and and her son and um my daughter from lansing is in and um i just enjoyed my family today so just enjoyed my family. Uh, let me let me back that one up. I really enjoyed my family today. Okay? All right. So, uh, tonight's question to you as I look ahead to what the devotion is. Let me put a question out to you. Okay? When you first left your parents' house and struck out on your own, what feelings did you have? Maybe looking back at it now with um, more mature eyes, let's put it that way. Um, maybe you look back at your younger self and, well, like me, I was excited. I was ready to go. I was going into the army. I was leaving 10 days after I graduated from high school and I couldn't wait, to tell you the truth. Hmm. And now I look back and I wonder if if I was so much in a hurry to get out of my parents' house if I didn't miss something in that last year. Something that I can never get back. So that's the question for you guys tonight. How did you feel? Maybe you were going your uh going away to your first year of college. Uh maybe you were striking out uh, on a on a break year, a gap year between high school and college, maybe uh, maybe you weren't intending to go to college at all, like me. I went in the military. It wasn't until later, later on, after I got out of the military, well, th that I decided, yeah, school was really the best place for me to be. So, Mike Burns says relief. I'm looking down here now. I haven't even <laughs> default said as excited. Okay, let me get, let me get. Let me go say hi to people coming in, all right? Miss Jenny, Jenny, and Jenny, Randy did contact me. Um, he was in the room last night, so thank you for introducing your new neighbor to us and for him taking some time and spending it with us. So Miss Jenny is here from Hal. Sharon Walton is here from Ludington. Hey, Sharon. The I-Beams from the ranch say good evening. Kelly from Houston. Hey, Kelly. Defalk and Dick are with us. Good evening, all, they say. Good evening from Jack and Joyce in Alabama, wintering in Alabama, as well as Mike and Priscilla wintering in Alabama. Sheila Ray uh, says, hey, and I just turned the camera around inadvertently. There we go. Okay. We're back. Um, man, if I would have known about that button the other night, I could have showed you all those bottles on the window without having to pick it up and turn it around. Uh, there's Defalk. Um saying hey and a bunch of emoticons there emoticons did i just call them emoticons sure did there's darcy hey darce good to have you with us tonight and randy's back again this evening hey randy welcome it's great to have you with us uh randy is a lady excuse me for that so <laughs> now i should have known that from the r-a-n-d-i-e okay should have, should have picked up on that one. My sister is Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E. 
Uh, well, now she sp spells it R O N I. Um, I should have picked up on that. Sorry about that, Randy. I'll get that better. Mike Burns. He says he feels he felt relief when he left home, went out, and struck on his own. Uh, D Falk said excited. Uh, Jenny is giving me a heads up about Randy. Thank you. Maddie Catherine. Good evening from Maddie Joe Charlie from Missouri. Oh, all right. Gotcha. Um, Mandy and Joe. Um, let's see. I performed their wedding ceremony and then I was able to also do a baptism uh, for their family. And that is an awesome thing. So great to have you guys with us. Welcome. Welcome. We miss you guys. We miss you. Your whole family. We miss you guys so much. Mike, oh, just Sheila Ray hated it. Moved out on my own. So quiet. Missed my siblings. Ah, sorry about that, Sheila. Yeah. When you go from a really busy house to, you know, your own place, especially. Wow. Jenny Gray said, I loved college, but did miss home. Yeah. I was, I was okay. I, I was leaving home. Um, I got on the bus at New Cumberland Army Depot. I looked behind. My parents were the only ones on the sidewalk waving goodbye. I turned around and looked and. I saw my mom crying and she had her head in my dad's shoulder and my dad was just waving goodbye to the bus as it pulled out. And uh, we got to the reception station in South Carolina at Fort Jackson and I was fine. Everything was going good. No problem. And then my first drill sergeant started yelling at me for something. It was actually it was something I it wasn't even my fault, um, but that doesn't matter. They yell at you for everything in the army. I wasn't used to being yelled at for no dang good reason, you know. <laughs> Usually when my parents yelled at me, there was a dang good reason for it. So um, I got all, and uh, drill sergeant put me in my place again. So within that night, within reception, the very first night, I had already get, gotten chewed out three different times uh, by the same drill sergeant, because once they had your number, whoo, they stayed on you. So they made us call home the very first night. I was 17 years old. I didn't call home. I say I, I had my recruiter's home phone number. <laughs> Sergeant Rita Goodman. Well, it was about, I'm going to say, 1 o'clock in the morning. And we were just supposed to call home very, very quick. Tell them we made it to, our training has begun. We're at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And we will call the next time we're given permission to do so. I called my recruiter and I yelled at her on the phone. A couple simple little words. Get me the hell out of here. <laughs> she tried to calm me down as best she could. I hung up the phone. I did cry myself to sleep that night. I'll admit it now. My 17 year old self did. Uh, I was away from home. I did. I realized in a minute what had happened. And then after that, I put it away. I said, that's it. I'm here. I've got this many weeks to get through basic training. It's time to buckle down and get down to it. And that was it. That was the last time I crawled myself. It was useless doing it. And I felt sorry for myself for just a minute and then on with it. That's pretty much about my personality type too. So that's what I went through when I left home. Kathy said Ben's parents were thrilled when he left. <laughs> oh, I can imagine they were. <laughs> Tonight I am drinking coffee with nothing else in it. I had a little bit of coquito earlier this evening, but, um, but just a little bit uh, as an after dinner kind of a thing. We shared it around the table, around the family. Um, but, wow, before you put another one up like that, Kathy, I ought to have another shot of some. <laughs> so if you have your Bibles with you and you want to follow along, we're going to be looking at Luke tonight, chapter 5. The first verse, and it's about Jesus calling his first apostles, okay? Uh, and if you don't have your Bibles with you, don't worry about it. Take it easy. 
Um, I'm going to read it right down to you anyway. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Jesus' first followers. One day while Jesus was standing beside Lake, Lake Galilee, or your Bible might say, Hanesaret, many people were pressing all around him to hear the word of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and asked him to push off a little from the land. Then Jesus sat down and continued to teach the people from the boat. When Jesus had finished speaking, speaking, he said to Simon, Take the boat into deeper water and put your nets in the water to catch some fish. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night trying to catch fish, and we caught nothing. But you say to put the nets in the water, so I will. When the fishermen did as Jesus told them, they caught so many fish that the nets began to break. They called to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they were almost sinking. When Simon Peter saw what had happened, he bowed down before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. He and the other fishermen were amazed at the many fish they caught, as were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. When the men brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. And the devotion tonight is entitled, Venturing into Deep Waters. One hot day when I was six, I, want, I went wading in a swimming hole. Suddenly, I stepped into a deep hole, slipped underwater, and began to drown. My uncle, seeing this from afar, swam and pulled me to safety. After 60 years, that memory of inky deep waters conjures for me a powerful metaphor of things I cannot fathom or name, let alone face, without fear and trepidation. The disciples probably thought Jesus was just going to have them cast their nets one more time. Really? Again? Perhaps they were so tired that the challenge to put into deep waters went over their heads, over their tired heads. Yet by putting out into the deep, into the unknown, they were taught the invaluable lesson that when one follows the direction of Jesus, one needs to be prepared to have one's nets filled to breaking. Each day, Jesus challenges us to put out into the deep, despite our misgivings and lack of faith, and, in the process, to be astounded by a, by a surprising harvest. And the prayer tonight that goes with the devotion, God, things gnaw at our sanity and courage, Make us bold to put out into the deep places with you. Amen. The prayer concern for tonight is for those who venture into deep waters for the sake of others. Hmm. And now we turn our attention to uh, our prayer list. For Saturday night, our prayer list we, we reserve uh, for people who have been diagnosed with cancer. Um people who are going through the treatment for it or who have recovered or in the recovery process, okay? So with that being said, we'll start off with praying with Leah from Mikey, our friend. For Tim, we pray with you. For Mike, your brother. And for, let's see, for Mike, your sister, Lori. Sharon, we join you in praying for Jim and Jack. And Chris, we give thanks for your friend, Bob. Uh, Suzanne, for your non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Greg, we join you in praying for our friend, Randy, 
And Kathy, we join you in praying for Joanne and Heidi. Miss Barbara, we continue to pray with you for um, Winnie, the eight-year-old, uh, and her grandfather, Mark. The reports are better on Mark than it is for Winnie. And uh, while well, we just continue to hold their, their family in prayer right along with you. For, oh, as well as for your brother. <laughs> Sorry about that, Barbara. Uh, for your brother. Um, Ann, Anna, excuse me. We pray with you for our friend Bridget. And Patty, for your mom, Carol. Jenna, thank you for bringing Sarah to our attention. And we join you in praying for her. Uh, Sheila, for your cousin as well. And I think, there we go. I think that's going to cover it for tonight. All right? Okay. And now, as with every night, the last thing we do together is we say Compline together. Compline is the last office of the day or the last time set aside specifically for prayer together. Okay? All right. It opens with the invitatory. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. And the psalm that goes along with Compline for Saturday nights is Psalm 134. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. And the lesson tonight is taken from 1 Peter. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith. And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the collect, we give you thanks, O God, for revealing your Son, Jesus Christ, to us by the light of his resurrection. Grant that as we sing your glory at the close of this day, we may, our joy may abound in the morning as we celebrate the Paschal mystery. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the canticle is the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And a morning prayer for those of you who will be waking up and using this as part of your morning devotion. Father, your Son rises again, O Lord, embracing the earth and seeking out every corner of our hearts. Warm us with the radiance of your presence. Scatter fear and sadness that we may live your love today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now, may the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and always. Well, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. Um, tomorrow is Sunday the 10th. And um, right here on this site at Emmanuel, we will broadcast the service. Uh, this week, we go back to, for any of you who watched the service last week and knew that we had some audio problems with our feed, uh, this week we had go back to the equipment as normal. So hopefully we'll have a lot, lot better audio for you, okay? Um, and then over at the site, Grace Episcopal and Emmanuel Lutheran, uh, at 1130, we broadcast Grace's service. So 
if you're up at 9 30 you want to watch good on you if you're at 11 30 you want to watch good on you there too okay on this platform i'll see you on monday night okay until then i pray that you have a restful night your tomorrow is even better than today in the meantime be well be safe love each other love god with all of your heart and as my pop says good lord willing and the creek don't rise i'll see you right back here either tomorrow morning or monday evening okay until then good night facebook